much older than me. I, I obviously wasn't alive. You weren't even a twin. I'm just kidding. I, uh, well, I can't, I mean, really, you look, you look back and, you, I mean, I can't imagine the, the sort of childhood without Planet, you know? I was what, nine, ten when the, first, when the first one came out. So, um, you know, it's not only the opportunity to work with, with, with these good people, um, but, you're, but you're also being asked to be a part of cinema history. So it's... Uh, you know that was that was above and beyond the story and and, and that and, you know you're 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 being you're involved in something that, that for the best for the most part as a comes with a very good pedigree. I mean it went a little wobbly <laughs> for a while, but um, but we're back on track. And I said that here. <laughs> we accept. We accept. I saw uh, the thing about Planet of the Apes was it really, for a long period of time, was my childhood. I mean, I was so obsessed after seeing that movie, and I don't know. As a kid, seeing the movie, it's it's an interesting thing that the first thing you want to do is actually become one of those apes. It's so fascinating, and I was so like interested in that John Chambers makeup and seeing. Um, seeing gorillas on horseback with guns, like what? that's a pretty powerful image. And I had the dolls, I had an 8mm reel of Beneath the Planet of the Apes, which I would watch until all the sprockets broke. I mean, I was obsessed. And the great thing about when I saw Rise, having been a lifelong fan, was that having always wanted to be an ape, when I saw that movie, I suddenly was an ape. And the reason was for a reason that I never would have suspected would ever be able to be done, which was that I had emotional identification with an ape. And that blew me away. I thought, oh my god, I, I can't believe that now I know what it is to feel that character's feelings. And in a way that actually the most human character in that story is Caesar and what Andy did. And I was so blown away by that. And I thought, wow, what's so exciting about Planet of the Apes is that of course the secret is, you know, we're all saying, oh, it's all about how the how the animals become, you know, get in charge. Well, we are the animals. And so the idea of doing a story about how the animals can get in charge, well, since that's what we are, the story's about us. And what I thought was so exciting about getting to get into this world was to to, to explore really, you know, it's a it's a blockbuster, right? It's a big sort of giant effects movie and, and it's a summer movie, but it's a very unique one in that it's about our nature. And and to explore that from both sides and to extend the story and everything that they did in Rise was such an exciting thing for me. And that, that's that's really why I wanted to do it. Let's move on to change. Yeah, and my question is for Andy. Uh, your first performance as Caesar, you received such a great groundswell of support and just recognition from the fans of the wonderful performance you gave leading to this campaign you know, to get you nominations for various award shows. What was that like for you? And uh, just do you have any expectations for the award that maybe that recognition will continue to grow for what you and others do? I mean, I have to say, I've, I've sort of unwittingly become a, spoke, a spokesperson for for a, a sort of perceived discrimination between actors who act in motion capture suits or, or in, in costumes with makeup, and, and and it's not a position I, I I've just sort of ended up in a, in this rather weird position, and and I shouldn't be because in actual fact, performance capture is just a, is a technology, it's another bunch of cameras filming an actor's performance, and. And I think really that the, the most important thing is that the perception is that that is need, that needs to be understood. So regardless of any awards or, 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 or accolades, it's it's really an understanding not just from within our own acting community, but but also with you know within the filmmaking community at large. And then you know actually the most people the people who know most about it are, are, are the audience. They seem to they seem to be so aware. And the younger generation of actors. And or younger generation of people who've grown up with knowing how to be, you know, who become avatars through video games, they have no problem understanding you can become something else, you know, sitting at home doing that. Um, so, so, so I really, really don't, um, you know, I, I, I would say I've never distinguished between, you know, when I play lots of different roles, whether they be live action or performance capture. And Gary's done the same. You know, we, you don't, pl you don't alter your performance because you're using a different camera to film you. Um, that's, that's, I suppose what. The question is the, the question that's often asked is what is it what's it like working with Andy Circus? 
as the as the, as the eight. And you're you're kind of to answer that because you have the big, big big scenes with them. Like it's I come to work and I get into a costume, and Andy comes to work and gets into a costume, and then, so it's. You know, at least you can see space, you can see the eyes, and you see the emotion. I would actually rather that than, than you, if you were wearing a mask, then the question might be, well, what's it like working with science behind a mask? You're not. You're like, you know, I mean, but you did it. I mean, you're... No, I, yeah, yeah, it's, it's Andy. It's, you know, that's what the great thing is. It's not anything other than but it's not that also in, in this film there's brilliant performances across the board from a load of talented actors playing eight as well it's and it's an ensemble piece and on the human side as well so it's so it's you know i, I don't see i mean it, it's interesting going back to the, the question about the original planet of the apes and, and there are all those sort of popular stories of well, the orangutan sat at one table and the chimpanzee sat at another table at dinner time, you know, and nobody ever talked to each other. And, uh, you know, you, we, certainly don't, we certainly don't have that situation, you know, the, the, the actors are the, the, the actors. But that's where I drew the line. <laughs> <laughs> they would never eat together. It was really, that was weird. That, that was very clear. Lunchtime. Yeah. No, it was, it was no, the, the thing about it was, for me, was I had never done the motion capture, and my... <laughs> My main interest, really, in, in being a director, I mean, I love telling stories, but the thing that's the most important to me is that world with the actors and getting to work with these people was such an incredible experience, and I thank you for that. But the thing about it that I was worried about was, because I didn't know, other than seeing Andy's work as it had been translated already, I knew that those performances were captivating, and I knew that I had been deeply affected by Caesar, but I didn't, I, I was like, I guess, I, I guess even I didn't quite understand it. And so I said, you know, I said, it's amazing what they're doing, but I really I need to understand it more. So at the beginning, actually, what I did was I said, I want to see every shot that Andy did as Andy, and then I want you to show me Caesar. And what blew me away about it was that Andy was better than Caesar. <laughs> and I was so emotionally affected by what he did, and I was saying to him, what a wow. It's amazing that you're able to translate as much as what he did, and I would love in this film if you could translate even more, because it's just, at the end of the day, it was such a relief. I thought, oh, so the way it works is, you work with a brilliant actor, and that has, that's really, there is, that's the secret of mocap, which it really shouldn't be a secret, it's just, you're capturing motion. The genius of Weta, what Weta does is faithfully turning that into something. Now what's crazy is that Caesar's anatomy is not Andy's anatomy. So how are they doing that? And it's all about, now I found out after spending all of this time with them, what details they're trying to take from Andy's face and how his mouth is a different shape. It's very weird. Sometimes I go, well, Andy didn't do that. You go, well, Andy's not an ape. So <laughs> it's a very interesting process, but at the end of the day, the heart of the story and the heart of everything we're doing all comes down to these guys. And it all comes down to performances that have the kind of emotional authenticity that you can get working with great actors, and that's what Andy is, that's what Carrie is, that's what Carrie is. So, to me, it's a, as a director, there's no greater pleasure than being able to just basically sit back and watch them. Uh, next yes, I have a question for Andy. Do you realize that your acting is also a change in other countries when they dub your voice? <laughs> Uh, have you seen the movie? Oh, have I seen it dubbed? Have I seen yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that's not, hasn't, well, it wasn't a problem with Caesar in the first movie, but, <laughs> but, no, <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but yes, no, I, I actually met, I actually met uh, the, uh, the, 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 when I was doing Lord of the Rings, I actually met the, uh, the, the, the guy who, from Japan who played Go oh. Golden and Smeagol. And we, we both wow. did it for each other, and it was no amazing, way. actually. I mean, I, I, without, you know, sounding like I'm very racially stereotyping, you know, his, his golden smear was like, I don't know, I don't know, it was fantastic. And I was like, God, that seemed, that's incredible, yeah. of course. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but, then, you know, but the thing is, we all, we've all had our performances dubbed into other languages. That's, that's, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my question is for Matt Reeves. I wanted to talk to you about, like, um, any, like, you know, if there's, like, any fears or just, like, incredible amount of excitement at first taking on this project because, obviously, uh, you love the franchise. 
sounds like a dream job for you. You know, it was a, the thing is, it was, it was a dream and it was terrifying because what, what essentially happened on the project was that there were, I, I had a, a great affinity for Rise, I thought it was really moving and I was like, when they approached me about it, I thought, why Rupert, why has done such a beautiful job with this film? And it turned out that for a number of reasons, that he didn't want to do what they wanted to do. He also didn't think the schedule was enough and all this stuff, which now having done it, I can tell you, he's right, the schedule was not enough. Um, but the, the idea was, I said, well, you know, what I'd be interested in is carrying forward really what was established in Rise, which is the emotional heart of those apes and how that turns into, look, we all know that it doesn't become planet of the humans and the apes. So it seemed to me that this was a moment where you could actually explore that question, the coexistence between these two populations that were struggling for survival. And the thing that was really important to me was that we carry forward the apes in an emotional way that you could relate to, and that we take the humans, and, and even in a way that was really different from Rise, take those humans and depict them in a way where they weren't villains either. There are no villains in our story. It's all about survival and trying to find a way to, to sort of master our nature and the impulses within us. And so the, I, I went in and I sort of pitched that and they were like, okay. And I was like, oh, okay, so what's the catch? And they said, the catch is you need to start shooting very soon. So um, that was the crazy thing about it, was just that I had to jump in and seize the opportunity. But they were giving me the opportunity to make the movie that I thought would be so exciting to be a part of and to get to dive into this world was something I couldn't resist. So there were a million things I'd never done before. The idea of doing motion capture and the idea of doing effects on this level and yet the big sort of relief of it all was that at its center it was exactly the same as making any movie except after you've done that then you have to do a number of really strange things like shoot the scene again which Gary can tell you without the actors or Gary's telling you. Like suddenly it's like, hey, we just did something great. Yeah, now you guys got to go back in there and do it again and this time they won't be there. And all of those things were added complexities that were challenging, but that was part of the thrill of it. It was really like just jumping out of an airplane and saying, I'm doing this, I'm just going to do this. And I, I got to tell you, I would never jump out of an airplane, but I, I was happy to jump into this. So I read that you have a way to work on the belt for the next one, and how you can expand it further and build upon it for the next five years. Well, I mean, the thing about it is, is that I think that there's a particular luxury with getting involved with the story, which is we already know the ending. So the story immediately isn't about the what happens. It's about the how it happens. And I had a screenwriting instructor who I loved many years ago who talked to me about stories. And he said, you know, there are the kind of the stories that are about the what, and then there are the stories that are about the why. If you already know what happened, then it becomes about the why, and the why is about psychology and about character. And that is what I find interesting. So to me, the idea was, and it was actually the thing why I was saying, you know, when I got involved, they had actually jumped farther down the line, closer to Planet of the Apes than I ever wanted to. When I, and I thought I was not going to do this movie. I thought, oh, that's what you guys want to do. Because I think you should start earlier. Because there's a long and interesting path that's all about the lives of these people and how they're affected in this situation. And the idea would be that the next phase of the story would be how those lives continue in this struggle. It's an ongoing struggle, the way that our lives are every day. Uh, for Gary, um, the colony you lead in this movie, is this like the last vestige of the human civilization as sort of humanity at the top of the food chain as these damn dirty apes are taking over with their paws and such? Well, initially we don't know that there are apes there because the scientists who came up with the idea has survived the, 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 the flu, the, the, the epidemic, which is which is sort of quite out huge part of the world. Um, uh, we believe that the, the, the military have, have done their job, and uh, that uh, I mean, basically, they wiped out wiped out the apes. Um, so we are. This, I mean, the, the thing is, we have food, we have water, but the currency of the movie, I guess, if, for want of a better word, is electricity. That's the that's the that's the the currency, and and we need that to communicate to the outside world to actually find out if there is anyone out there, 
or how many are out there, who is out there. Um, so uh, we, you know, and we, uh, so we believe, you know, for all intents and purposes, we could be the only, the only. I'm sorry, I'm incredibly distracted by the uh, <laughs> <laughs> cab ride. Um, uh, so we, yeah, we could be the only survivors, and then of course we discover, you know, cut to a community of apes. We're, 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 all, we're all doing their doing their thing with their with their family and and think we've all been wiped out and uh, you know and then of course you know we dis we discover each other. They got a problem. And then that's and the drama is yeah I mean that's the, you know can these can the apes and can the humans coexist? For me the idea was that. It's really a story of two families. There's a human family and there's an ape family, and that's what the colony is, that's the human family. And the difference is that the apes, they're on the ascendancy. They're still, you know, the idea is we start in this ape world and we're following their development. It's like, oh my God, in ways it almost sort of mirrors our own sort of tribal development that you see as language is coming into being and all of this stuff. And you're seeing all of the bonds that have been formed and the next generation that's coming, the civilization they're building, they're really on the way up. But the humans, the colony, they are just have the most massive sort of tragedy happen to them. And they are a family that's trying to heal itself. And so these two families have to find some way to survive. And the stakes are all about the things that they care about. And also, there's the question for the humans deeply about what it is that they've lost. The idea in this story for the humans is what it took even to still be here. And what was lost along the way. And what's worth fighting for at this point. And all of those questions, I think, are very emotional questions. It's one of the reasons why I was so excited to have these guys in that story, because of the emotional sort of depth of that was really important to me, so that this would not feel like we had sort of like straw man humans that you sometimes see in these movies, where it's like, oh, let's see the apes destroy the humans. I can't wait. That's not what the story is about. And so that's really the struggle, is the struggle about what are these two families going to do to avoid killing each other. <laughs> How did filming in such a culturally uh, rich place like New Orleans impact production? Um. I, I mean, I think we were an amazing time. To start. I, I, I love it. Really you know, yeah. great time. So it's extraordinary to go on. Um, uh, it's so, so above and beyond the, you know, the difficulties of shooting in 170 minutes. You know, which, which, uh, nobody wants to stand next to you. I love the smell of stale beer and vomit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's a that combined with us in our mocap suits. Yeah, like, that's right, we're wearing flannel suits in like a hundred degree, hundred degree. You wouldn't be anywhere near us. Yeah. 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 Interesting smell. Yeah. 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 But my god, no, what a great city. I, I'd go back there in a heartbeat. I mean, um, the music scene was incredible. Uh, it was a jazz, yeah, like a jazz fanatic. Like like Food. Food was, <laughs> was amazing, yeah. Go back in a heartbeat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.